Hello and welcome to the third of our midweek musings for this season of Advent. I want to begin by asking you a question. What's at the top of your Christmas tree? Star or angel? Maybe it's neither and something completely different. Whatever adorns the top of your tree, have you ever thought of its significance? James got us thinking last week about the rituals that surround Christmas, the whys and how we do things. And I think whatever else we do to mark this season of Advent and Christmas, a tradition known all over the world is the decoration of a tree. Memories come back to life whilst unpacking the carefully wrapped ornaments for another year. Whether they have been handmade by tiny hands in school and then have become a bit bedraggled over the years. Or maybe you buy a new selection each year that all match. Or yours is like mine and a lovely collection of memories that have been gathered over many years. However different our trees are, they all hold a special place in our homes at Christmas. When I decorate my tree, the last decoration to go on, the crown if you like, is my angel. I must admit she too is a bit bedraggled now and has needed an outfit change, but tradition holds that she remains the top of my tree. So what do you have, star or angel? Believe it or not, there was a poll asking that very question and star or angel came out on top. So why? Historically, the infant Jesus was placed at the top of the tree but this tradition later evolved into it being a star or angel, which, as we know, are traditional symbols of the nativity of Jesus. Firstly, the star. I have lots of different interpretations of stars on my tree, including the Jewish symbol, the star of David, bought in the Holy Land. Stars are so associated with Christmas and symbolic of light then it seems appropriate that this should be the crown at the top of a tree. The Star of Bethlehem, or sometimes it is referred to as the Christmas Star, guided the wise men to the stable to see the infant Jesus. We recall the story in Matthew's Gospel. Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed a star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. The stars and comets and planets and anything heavenly can be connected through creation to the way that God revealed himself. The star which the wise men followed is only referenced in the Gospel of Matthew. There are only two birth accounts, one in Matthew and one in Luke. It is in the Gospel of Luke where we meet the angel who was sent by God to visit Mary. The angel reassured Mary that the news that he brought is one of great joy and one which shows God's favour towards the young woman. Angels, therefore, throughout tradition are the ones who deliver the message, reassuring the hearer of the good news of God. So whichever you have on the top of your tree, be it star or angel, each have their place in our nativity story, just as they do in your story. As the tree points upwards with the star or angel adorning the top, then so our hearts are lifted to hear the good news of the angels, to hear afresh the story of the Christ child, God becoming human among us. Both the star and angels are symbols of hope during this time of uncertainty in our world. The star led those to discover the child and the angels brought glad tidings of great joy. As you continue on your journey this Advent and maybe see a star or angel on top of the tree or in a window, then maybe you might be reminded of the words that we will hear sung in our Office of Compline, which follows. As the night watch for, looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Lord. Amen. Grant us a quiet night 
and a perfect end. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen.
God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 